All right, everybody, this is Ross. And in today's video, I wanna do a two year comparison of my fig cuttings and talk about the rooting process because I wanna show you guys the results. So we have cuttings here as an example that we rooted only three or four or five months ago. This bin is about three months ago. They look very lush, very green, very healthy. A lot of them have fruits on them. Down here in these two bins are fig cuttings that we rooted the prior winter. So now these have been through an entire dormancy. They're just now waking up now that it's May. We have some temperatures. Some of them look pretty good. Others don't look too happy. Uh, but for the most part, I would make an argument that there is really no difference. It's a night and day difference between the trees that we rooted three or four months ago versus the cuttings that I rooted last year. And the reason for that is a lot to do with our indoor rooting process. So we've done videos now, an entire playlist that's many videos long, talking about every step of the way of the rooting process. And I highly recommend that you guys go check that out on our channel. That playlist details, like I said, every step of the way. But we rarely talk about the results of those methods and those techniques. Here it is. This is it right in here in front of me. The two year comparison, like I said. So the difference between why these trees look so good and these really didn't look all that great last year is really all in the lighting. Is really the only particular thing that I changed last year um, to this year. So everything has been the same. Uh, mostly the soil stayed the same. My watering stayed the same. My feeding stayed the same. Uh, the really the biggest difference was the lighting. And the reason for that is I doubled the lighting. I didn't change the bulbs. I didn't change the fixtures. I just added double the amount of lighting that I had last year. And I realized at the end of last year, these trees don't really look like uh, they have enough light to them. They don't really seem to be doing enough um, that they normally would. And therefore, when I brought them out and adjusted them to the full sun, and to the outdoor environment, um, they sort of struggled. And last year they didn't really get off on the best start to the year. Uh, and they sat in these bins and we'll get into sort of more reasons why they, they really just stagnated for the entire season last year. Um, and it's only really now until this wake up process, they're waking up from dormancy, that they're getting that little boost of energy to catch up or be on par with these trees that are only three or four months old. Uh, a lot of that's gonna actually have to do with this particular structure here that I've set up. We'll talk about this in a minute. But uh, we've doubled the lighting. That's really the, the biggest difference. So I had one fixture with two bulbs in it, right? We have T12, I think they're T12 or T8 bulbs. I can't remember. 4100K is the color temperature. Two bulbs per fixture. They're four foot shop lights. And I had one shop light covering a 16 inch wide plant material. So each of these pots, as an example, are four inches wide. I have bins with four pots wide, so therefore four by four inches is 16 inches wide. Um, and one fixture just isn't enough to cover a four inch, uh, a 16 wide inch uh, bin here. So what I did was I doubled it. Now each fixture is covering eight inches and therefore there's, the light is getting really directly onto those leaves a lot better. Also the height of the fixtures I think was also fixed pretty well as well. So we lowered the height on these, uh, got them closer to the leaves, not close enough to burn them, but that was enough to get them off to a really great head start compared to last year. We've also been able to feed them a couple times, not that we didn't feed last year, but I think the feedings made more of a difference this year because of how much leaf mass they actually had. So that's really the big difference there. And I, I think if you guys are struggling out there, anyone's watching this and want to has, you know, want to get some tips. Uh, really, it's all in the water, it's all in the fertilizer, but it's really in those lights. Get the right soil to have the right soil moisture. Once you establish that, you know that's right. Think about your lighting system. Think about how far away the plants are from the lights. If they're on for the right duration of time as well. Um, 
and you're going to have great success. It's pretty much a guarantee at that point. Um, so that's my big tip here, guys, for the rooting process. Now, when these particular trees that came out last year and we had them in these bins, the issue was the water, every time it rained, would collect at the bottom of these bins because there's no holes in these bins. I like to do this because it helps water them a lot easier. We can water the bottom of the bins, which then creates a layer of water, which then bottom waters a lot of the pots. It just makes things a bit easier. It also contains these pots because these pots are not really the most sturdy things. They're gonna fall over. So it's nice to have some sort of uh, bin for them to contain them but by having them in this bin we actually collect too much water and a lot of these trees sat in water for an extended period of time if it rained a lot which it does rain a lot here it's creating root rot these trees are not very happy they're not loving life i didn't feed them last year we need to give some of these now a lot more soil i want to show you this particular tree this guy is also in a fabric pot and these fabrics I'm not the biggest fan of. I don't like how they ship. You really need to have a very strong root mass in here, a thick root mass before you ship these, I find. Otherwise, they kind of fall apart in shipping. Um, also, they dry out very quickly and they're very susceptible to soaking up a lot of that water. So they are constantly not really at the right moisture content here in the soil. You can see the parafilm from last year. Um, so this guy looks pretty decently healthy now with these new leaves that are coming out. It's putting out some nice new growth. But we need to give these trees some help. We need to up-pot them. I need to give them more soil. I'm taking them all out of this fabric. I'm putting them into plastic, the 4 by 9 plastic pots. And uh, we're going to feed them, give them some slow-release Osmocote, uh, just so they have fertilizer all season. Because if they're going to stay in these pots for an extended period of time, I highly recommend you do all the things I just mentioned. Is give them fertilizer, a lot of water, but you don't want to drown them, right? Because they're going to be in these small pots. They're probably a weaker tree. They may not be as root-bound as you want. If it's really root-bound, you can afford to really water them and have them soaking wet for an extended period of time. But these... This plastic here in this particular cold frame, this was our cold frame, the top of it. We unhinged it, took it off the cold frame simply because our peas are getting too warm. Our beans have germinated. It's now getting warmer outside, so the beans don't necessarily need this excess heat, although it would be nice. The peas certainly don't, and I want to extend the pea crop as long as I can. Um, so we got to take this off, and I figure why get rid of this or why put it away? We can now use this for a dual purpose and have this now protecting all of these fig cuttings and have these underneath so that the water sheds off. It's also giving them some excess heat. It's creating a greenhouse environment, although it's not really too warm under here. It's giving them maybe a couple degrees, which is nice. And it's really specifically giving them the right environment because a lot of us in the country don't have the most conducive environment for young fig plants. We want probably a drier environment uh, that has the right soil moisture that we can control at all times. That's gonna have the right amount of fertilizer. It's not leaching out everywhere. Um, and we wanna have them a bit warm. So that's exactly what this is doing. And I highly recommend that if you guys have some young trees, get them underneath something like this. You can build this very easily. Plastic's very cheap. The uh, wood is very cheap, just some nails and screws and things. You put this together. My friend Danny in New York City has himself a, uh, like a grow tent that he has for his young cuttings, which he roots outside every year uh, in the pots. And he has a nice little um, a shade cloth over top of it to keep it a little bit shadier in there. Um, you can do that as well. I think changing the outdoor environment, because it's really not conducive for a lot of us, for these fig trees. So that's my plan. That's what I'm going to be doing so far. That's also the two year comparison. You know, some of these trees, as an example, this is like a tree I rooted about four months ago. You can see it's got fruit all over it. The leaves are very lush, very green. It's very healthy. It's got a good shoot growth to it. And I showed you guys the bottom, or actually, I showed you guys the roots on this particular thing. 
it's filled with roots. So it's really nice to see that we've had such good success. I hope you guys have such good success in the future when you guys are doing a rooting environment. Think about all those things I mentioned. When you bring them outside, transition them to the sun very, very slowly and get them under some sort of cover here. And I think you guys will have much better plants, healthier plants if they're staying in this environment for an extended period of time. So I wanna thank everybody out there for watching this, this video. Again, the, the comparison's quite drastic and it's really for the reasons I mentioned, the, the lighting and of course the, the now the environment of bringing them underneath this cover to give them the right environment to grow and be healthier. So yeah, thank you guys. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Check out us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe, we'll see everybody soon. Take care.